Tell me about uh, Nikolsky, the, the place, and, and the compass that's involved with it. Well, Nikolsky is a very, very small village. It does exist, but uh, you need a very good uh, map of Alaska to see it. You won't see it into uh, a, a terrestrial globe. It's a small place with about 35 inhabitants, uh, 6,000 sheep, a few dogs. It's uh, absolutely uh, it's the most you know, remote place you can imagine. It's about uh, 1,000 nautical miles from the closest road from mainland you know this is a huge archipelago the uh, Aleutian Island Islands and um, there's this compass well it's not in the north you know it's more it's way west but there's this compass in the book that is pointing to some place you know west to the north 34 degrees west to the north and the character is kind of imagined that it's actually pointing to Nikolsky which is uh, which is an odd idea I think it's basically a good image to represent obsessions because you cannot explain why the compass is actually pointing in that direction. Uh, you cannot prove it either and you cannot go to Nikolsky because it's such a remote place. So basically it's just an image of things in your life that are not fitting, you know. It's this, these weird things happening in your brain that you cannot explain, it's not rational, but yet it's a kind of point of reference in your life. This is obsessions. That's what I mean the compass is all about. There are a lot of characters with obsessions and... Uh, oh yes, that's an, uh, a book about obsessions actually. Yeah, and uh, not at your average obsessions. And they are all very quirky. Everybody in the book is quirky. Are they? Uh, I, I'm going to have to break this to you. Yes, they're, they're, they they're a little odd. Um, there's a woman obsessed with uh, her pirates, uh, pirate ancestors. Uh, the guy who uh, writes letters almost at random to try and find his his nomad mother. Um, there are three ma main characters. It says Joyce, Noah, and the unnamed narrator. Yes, which is uh, he is not very uh, awkward. He's just quite um, a straight guy. You think he thinks of himself as a straight guy who. Uh, hasn't uh, hasn't have a life or a destiny, so that this this character is is quite simple. But um, yes, I don't know. At some point, when you write this book, okay, I, I could try to make you know to find meanings and explain how this symbol uh, symbolizes that. And at some point, when you write a book, you want to m you know say some things. You want to mean some things, and you also want to write a good stories and not. You know, um, you want the reader not to be bored, basically. And and maybe this is a concern you have. This, that's a concern that is especially strong when you're a young author and you're not, you know, actually very sure about what it is you're supposed to write and how you are supposed to get the attention of the readers. So you try to find a, a strong way to 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 get the reader and keep the reader into the book and. Um, it end, ends up with strange characters and strange stories, and it can actually looks like uh, can look like a statement, kind of a fictional statement about what a story is supposed to be. The book at, at times resembled uh, the bookstore that's in, in because one of the characters works in a, in a bookstore. The the bathroom, uh, there are even books tucked into yes. nooks and crannies, and the, and, the, and there are like bits of the plot are kind of tucked the same way. Is that what you were thinking of as you were writing it? Yes, and actually, this this you know the way this uh, bookstore is described uh, is pretty much uh, a comment on a commentary on on how the book was written, and so it is with um, also with you know there's this other chapter was where the um, the character is building a computer from used computer parts that she's uh, taking from dumpsters. And this also is, you know, this 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 idea that computer science is exists chaos, and you have to make sense into the chaos. This is, you know, these are all comments on how I, I've been writing the book, uh, how you you take all those things that don't look to go very, you know, to fit very well one with each other, and you try to make sense of it. You know, tr you try to you find patterns. You try to make, you know. Um, optical effects and, and organize them in a way that you have 
some some sense, some mathematics behind it. And but basically, may, maybe it's just you know something you cannot avoid because your brain is trying anyways to do it, even though you're not aware of it. Um, maybe I was just you know try to to be aware of what my brains was was trying to do. You can read the book as just entertainment. But if you sit down, you know, and y you take some time to look at the stories and analyze the way things are written, then you find some other layers of sense. And this was important to me to have this this density of the book. I, I finished the book and I thought, you know, this guy isn't uh, isn't just a writer. I think he's an artist who happens to express himself as a, in writing. And uh, do you understand the? That's funny the difference? because actually I I started studying in, in visual arts. Okay, that that, that explains yeah, that explains it because it, it in some ways it's a it's a it's a big huge canvas or a, a, like a mural with lots of detail. And yeah, the, I, I guess that this is uh, this is something something within me that I cannot you know uh, that, that 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 expresses itself. But I was a lousy artist, that's why I went to literature. I, I was obviously better writing than than doing things you know painting. The book is Nikolsky. I've been speaking with the author Nicholas Dickner and Nikolsky, published by Knopf Canada.